has come up with a shortcut that's going to save you a lot of miles. Turns off to the west just a ways. I thought you told me to stay with you to the San Luis before it turned west. Yeah, well, that was the best I knew then. Pete's just come in from scouting with this, though. See, Mr. Kurtz, if you turn off here and follow the trail that parallels the telegraph line, you'll hit the San Luis as soon as we will, but you'll be a lot farther west. You recommend it, Mr. Favor? Oh, if Pete says so, Mr. Kurtz. <laughs> kind of... I hate to leave you folks. Well, it is just a day earlier, and you'll be safe enough now. You better get ready. The turnoff's right up here. But where's your daughter? Well, she probably wherever that that fella Rowdy is. She's been dogging his footsteps for days. Idiot! Oh, Jerry! <laughs> I can read them, but they sure know what they mean. Talking wires, they call them. This thing you hear of again. You hear those dot dashes? I wonder what they're saying. Yeah, probably talking about some general's bunions, I suppose. Look, I'm gonna get back to work. Come on, you gotta get back to your wagon and stay there. Lieutenant, this message is for you. Urgent. Now, what is it? J.T. Whitley, second lieutenant, telegraph repair detail, urgent. All right, get on with it. Fort Milton reports... Yes, that... yes. Poor boy, getting mighty warm for this time of year. Wonder what it's gonna be like in July. Sure nice right now, though. Grass is up. Birds are singing. Flowers are being bloomed for long. Yep. Them commands gonna be heading south for Mexican horses, too. Maybe already started. Yeah, most probably. I reckon I ought to be getting started my own self. You mean you're going over the fence, Hap? Ain't no fences out here, took it, boy. I don't see much point in waiting till we get back to the fort. I had you figured right, Johnson. Every year there's at least one. One what? Winter soldier. You right. The army counts on it. I wouldn't hardly want to disappoint him. You really gonna do it, Hap? Well, of course I am. Well, I had it planned that way when I joined up in the fall. Spend me a nice, warm, pleasant winter in cozy barracks with some good company. Then come to fine weather and move on. California, points west. Maybe the Sandwich Islands. Now, how's that sound to you? Yes, sir. Go on to the South Seas. Yes, sir. Some of them pretty island girls. <laughs> you ought to come along with me, took it, boy. Not me. That's desertion, Hap. If they ever catch you... Oh, now, now, now. They don't ever catch winter soldiers. Most time, they don't even chase after them. No, sir. They got too many other things to occupy themselves with. Things I ain't got no hankering for at all. Now, ain't he a fine specimen? No conscience, no loyalty, no sense of duty. Say, Corporal, if you got any notion about telling that there lieutenant or anybody else about me, you can just bet you're gonna be wearing them stripes in your grave. Troopers, the horse! Come on, Cooper. Let's get mounted. On the double. What's up, Sarge? Comanches. Gonna warn the ranches and herds between here and the San Luis. Comanches. Around here? Over any hill. So keep your eyes open and your rifles ready. All right, come on. Let's go. Move. Well, that settles it, Tookie boy. I'll see you in Tahiti. You really leaving, Hap? You betcha I am. You can have my share of Comanche and my compliments, too. But out here, where you go? I don't know. I reckon I'll start with that Watson's Trading Goods place where we was yesterday. I'll manage that threat. Well, happy days, good partner. <laughs> Oh, these 
trading both franchises to the worst kind of riprap. Bunch of robbers. Ought to get rich quick off of the heathens and us poor traveling folks. Mr. Wishbone, can I get some churn tobacco? Not unless you got a gold mine hid out someplace. Oh, this Jasper reminds me of a fellow I knew back in Nacogdoches. Robbed his own mother of her teeth for the metal in him. Anyway, eating tobacco's upsetting to the stomach. Oh, it's sure gonna be a long month of Sundays in freezing weather on the equator before I ever come back to this so-called trading post again, or my name isn't Wishbone. Get up. <laughs> Speak to the trader. Why, how do, Mr. Watson? You look to me like a man who might be interested in a fine bargain. Where's your detail? Oh, they off up over the hill somewhere chasing a wild goose. Ain't no need to worry about them. Appears to me that uh, you might be interested in making a little money. Now, am I right? These for the uniform. Well, now, you pretty smart fella. How'd you know what I was going to ask you? Don't you think I've ever seen a winter soldier before? You got to get rid of that army stuff quick, so I trade you these. <laughs> they ain't nothing but cheap engine trading goods. That's what I've got. Your weapons? Oh, you betcha. Now, there, that's the latest army issue. Twelve shot repeater, and both of them together, Oh, it must be worth about $100. Both registered to the U.S. government. <laughs> oh, you ain't serious. Why, this old rickety thing for them two fine pieces? A 20 shot. Ought to see you to the railroad, barring accident. Well, now, supposing I run into engines. Man alone, a gun won't do you no good anyhow. <sighs> Mr. Watson, those two fine pieces must be worth at least ten of these old junks and say, uh, about 200 rounds. Now, how about it? Take it or leave it. <sighs> Mr. Watson, just between two fine gentlemen, you ain't nothing but an out-and-out -out thief. Who's trying to sell who stolen army goods? I'm taking a big chance just keeping it on my premises. If you don't like the offer, you can go to the next place. And I reckon you know how far that is. <sighs> well, how about my horse and saddle out back? I got a broke saddle you can fix, and I'll trade even. But that horse with the U.S. carved on its hoof, no thanks. Oh, now. You know I can't ride that horse no place. That's your problem, and I'm not making it mine. Let me tell you something. You know you're wasting your time out here with these poor engines. You ought to be back east robbing rich widders and orphans. <laughs> oh, now, hold on just a second. There was a chuck wagon out there. Had the fella name called uh, Wishbone. You wouldn't happen to know where that herd was camped, would you? A few miles west. They're heading for the San Luis Crossing. Figure on joining up with them? Well, now, that wouldn't be no business of yours. Not unless you was figuring to tell them blue coats next time they come through. Well, I might. I guess you're provident for me. That ain't loaded. I've seen to that. Now, take off that uniform and get off of my premises fast. You, uh, wouldn't just... Give me a little sack of grub and some chow and tobacco, would you? Try that trail herd. Maybe you can bamboozle them. You my nice fella.
Can't thank you enough, Mr. Favor, for letting us tag along all these days. It's been a real pleasure, Mr. Kurtz. Ellie and me will miss you all. It's a real lonesome thing traveling alone out on those prairies. Well, I'm sure you'll be just fine now. Well, it ain't me you'll be most lonesome. She's real took for the first time. She's only 16. Um, bye, Ellie. That's all I could find. I had to dig three feet for that. Well, you quit digging too soon. You didn't strike water yet. You expect me to cook with this stuff? Sorry, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, boy. I tell you, between thieving traders and dry camps, I'll be switched if I know why I keep coming on these drives. It gets so a man can't even look forward to the after place down below. You snake bit or something, Mr. Wishbone? No, I'm not snake bit or something, and I haven't got a gut ache neither. I just happen to need some medical remedy. May not do me any good, but at least it can't make anything worse. <laughs> well, now, what do you know about that? If it ain't old wishbone. <laughs> huh? Why, well, it's a blasted miracle, that's what it is. Well, you remember me, don't you, wishbone, old boy? Why, you ain't forgot your good friends from Nacogdoches so soon now, have you? Oh, well, I guess not. <laughs> well, I'm Hap Johnson. A Myrtle Johnson's boy. Oh, there was a time when her and your mommy was just thick as thieves. Of course, that was a ways back, but I bet you recollect now, don't you? Myrtle Johnson. Haven't you got anything to do? No, I don't think I recollect any Myrtle Johnson. <laughs> oh, sex alive. The times we did have together. <laughs> of course, now, you was a mite older than I was, and you didn't hardly pay too much attention to me, but there was a time there when you was kind of my boyhood hero. <laughs> Johnson, you said your name was. You bet you, Hap. Short for happy, because I used to ball so much when I was a baby. <laughs> Well, now, you remember that teacher? Now, what was her name? The old Hazel Tewksbury? You betcha, Hazel Tewksbury. Recollect the time that she tanned my hide when I let them pigs waller in her petunia bed. <laughs> I got a vague recollection. Oh, surely. Everybody back in Nacogdoches remembers that. <laughs> well, now, how are the folks back home? Oh, fine, I guess. I don't get back much anymore. Ah, me neither, me neither. We don't get back the way we are to, and that's for sure. <laughs> well, now, so you trailing the herd of cows north, huh? Ain't that a coincidence? Wish I'm going the same way my own self. Well, how is it your way out here all alone without a horse or anything? Oh, well, I got me a horse. He's back up over the hill yonder. See, I, uh... I made camp for you all come along, and then I just kind of ambled over to see who you all was. But I never figured to run into no old friend like you. <laughs> well, now, how do, how do, Hap Johnson's my name. Yeah, this is a fellow from down where I used to live, Nacogdoches. <laughs> Wishbone and I's old, old friends. Well, welcome to you, Mr. Johnson. A friend of Wishbone's, a friend of ours. Thank you. Make yourself at home. You bet you don't mind if I do. Well, sir, there I was, just a running for my life. And that bear so close behind me, I could feel his hot breath a breathing on my britches. And all of a sudden, I stubbed my toe. What happened? Why, that rifle went flying out of my arms and landed in the ground with the barrel pointing right up at me. 
And it was just then that I knowed I was saved. Saved? How? Why, I run down that gun barrel and hid, and that bear went right over me and on down the trail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon All right, we better turn in. Don't tell them how much sleep we're gonna get tonight. Oh, now the party's just getting started. I got a whole heap more stories to tell. I'm afraid Roddy's right. We're more than like to have trouble with those critters out there tonight. So we'll ride double night guard. Mighty serious young gent. Don't seem to appreciate my storytelling. Well, it, it ain't exactly that. You see, Roddy had sort of a sad part in the day. Yeah, a very pretty young lady. Oh, yeah, of course, she was only crowding 16. All right, all right, you. Men have had your fun. <laughs> well, now, what kind of trail herd is this with young ladies traveling with you? No, she was just traveling along with her father, some homesteaders on their way west to Colorado. Oh, yeah? What happened to them? They took off about noon, took a shortcut parallel to the telegraph line to the San Luis River. Ah, I'm poor, Nestor's. Feel sorry for him sometime. Traveling out here all alone. Not a penny to the name, nothing to go on. Oh, I don't know. Kurtz didn't seem like no pauper to me, did he, you, Quince? No. He sold a farm back east. Must have got some money for that. Yeah. Well, in fact, he even offered to pay Mr. Favor for his keep. Well, they're down. Yeah. Night, gents. Good night. <clears throat> Mr. Favor, I appreciate your hospitality. Let me eat dinner and all. No thanks necessary. Well, you got a mighty fine bunch here. It's just a pure pleasure to be with them. Appears to me, though, you might be needing another hand to railroad. I'm afraid not, Mr. Johnson. Well, now, it ain't just my storytelling recommends me. I can punch cows with the best of them. I figured maybe being an old friend of Wishbones, well, I would dearly like to help an old, old friend of Wishbones, but like I say, it just ain't got the room. Yeah, it shouldn't be too much trouble for you to go back to traveling on your own, like you say you've been doing. Is there something about me you don't like? Yeah, let's just say, um, you don't amuse me. Oh. Huh. You didn't hire that fella, did you? Well, no. You want me to, Wish? No. You know, I don't know what it is, but there's something fishy about him. I thought uh, you and he was old friends. Oh, no. Tell the truth, I don't even remember him. Of course, he did recognize me, but I'm sure we was never good friends. Did you, uh, notice anything about his clothes? Yeah. There is something strange about them. Yeah, well, they're brand new, but they're real cheap, like uh, Indian trade goods, like what you'd get at a trading post, like the one that you visited today. <laughs> Get by with this sort of thing. I'll complain to Washington. I demand to know what this is all about. This. And this. Lieutenant. And that. Where is he? How should I know? I wouldn't let him stay here. We've got a lot more important things to do than waste time looking for one deserter. Where did he go? To a trail herd west and north of here, headed for San Luis Crossing. All right, that's on our way. You're under arrest. Me? Now, wait a minute. This is going to cost you your franchise. Leave two men to guard him. We'll pick them up when we come back after warning the Valley Ranches. Over here. All right, troopers, you're on guard. Give me that evidence. Where is soldier? Oh, hey there, Wish. Well, I've been looking all over for you. What are you doing here? I thought you went back to your own camp. Well, now I did. But I couldn't go away without saying goodbye to a good friend. I thought uh, maybe you'd do me a little favor and we could do some trading. What kind of trading? Well, 
I need me some vittles. And I just thought maybe you'd give me a sack of grub for this here fine blanket. And it's just like new. It looks like army issue. Oh, well, so it does. But the uh, fella sold it to me, so it's all legal like. Oh, I'll bet. Oh, now, Wish, do you doubt my veracity? Yes, I do. You know, I've been thinking, Mr. Johnson, I don't remember you back in Nacogdoches, and I don't think you remember me. Now, I don't know what your game is, but I don't like the smell of it. So I'm not gonna do any kind of business with you. Now, you take that blanket and get out of here before you get thrown out. <sighs> Why, now, hold on there, good partner. You heard the man. Well, now, what is the matter with you two gents? Is this any way to be treating a fellow traveler? You think I'm some kind of criminal or something? <laughs> Maybe you are, Mr. Johnson. Maybe you are. If that's your real name. That um, government issue blanket sort of helps add it all up. Adds up what? Well, you are a winter soldier, ain't you? A deserter. So what if I am? Well, it ain't the worst thing in the world. I just don't like fighting. I like to live free as a bird, and I don't hurt nobody. So what business is of yours? You riding herd for the army? No. Nope. <laughs> I bet you scared they'd find out and charge you. Ain't no worry there. I'd tell them you didn't know nothing about it. That ain't what worries me. <sighs> you figure I can't do the work just good as any man? Oh, I guess you could, if you wanted to. Well, now you got me. What is it? I just don't like your kind around. Uh-oh. You one of them kind of fellas, huh? You're just a little mite of a hypocrite, ain't you? You figure you got a group of boys here ain't never broke a law? You just plumb sure they all lily white? One thing I know about all the men I got, I can depend on them. Nobody can depend on a winter soldier. Because he's just out for himself. When you need him, he's never there. Now, will you take your gear and get on back to your camp? Happy days, boss man. his own camp, where? Well, off that way. We just came that way. We saw no signs of a camp. Search this place. Yes, sir. Uh, now, just a minute, Lieutenant. I don't have time to argue, cowboy. I've got a warning to sound. Look, see all you want. We got nothing to hide. Oh, would you mind not making a ruckus, though? We got an awful fidgety bunch of cattle out there. Lieutenant! Look at this. Rub off the mud. Now, this Wrangler swore there was no such horse here. See, I swear it. I never saw this horse before. Of course not. Bring him along. Now, wait a minute. Lieutenant! Whoa, come on. Whose bedroll is this? Uh, it's uh, mine. Well, you threw him out of camp, but uh, not before you did business with him, huh? You're both under arrest. Come on, be reasonable, man. Give us a break. At least give us a chance to go after Johnson and bring him back, huh? We'll probably find him ourselves. Meanwhile, you and your wrangler will be held at the trading post until we get back tomorrow night. We got a job to do. We can't just stand still. Those cattle need water. You should have thought of that before you bought stolen army goods. Well, look, I told you. That's you... no use, boss. He's typical army. 
You can't expect him to be reasonable, think that way. But what does he take me for? Do I look like a traitor? One measly blanket and a horse who was no better than the one that Joker rode off with. Well, don't worry about Johnson. I'll, uh, I'll track him down and bring him back. Maybe you'd better take somebody with you. Quince? We'll get him, boss. Pete, you take over the herd. Your main problem will be to keep them from running. They got the smell of water now. Well, don't you worry about it, boss. And if they go, just try to keep them from killing each other. And don't let them run all the fat off. I'll manage it. Oh, since she'll be at the trading post tomorrow night, what then? Then we take you to Fort Claiborne for trial. Unless they brought Johnson back. And Johnson corroborates your story. Hmm. Oh, what about Kurtz and his daughter? Shouldn't they be warned about the Indian? It's more important to warn the Valley Ranches. That's the probable route of the Comanches. Why, how do, ma'am? Pa? Now, pa? hold on. I ain't no wild Indian. I ain't no highwayman neither now. Fact is, I ain't nobody for you to be scared of at all, Mr. Kurtz. Well, I was sent here to help you by your good friend, and mine too, Mr. Gil Favor. Mr. Favor sent you? You betcha he surely did. What did he send you for? Why, just to ride along the trail with your ways and give you some protection in case you might need it. Why? Something happened? No, no, you safe enough. See, the thing is, he wanted me to come and tell you about this here shortcut he found out about after you all left. But you wasn't with the herd when we left him yesterday. Where'd you come from? Well, now, it was just a lucky thing. See, I was ambling along the trail, figuring to catch up with him sooner or later, and I must have just after you all left. Anyway, when Mr. Favor found out about this here shortcut, he told me to come right on ahead and tell you about it. You know Mr. Favor for some time, then? Some time? Well, we was boys together back in Texas. Couldn't be much better friends. So most naturally, when he asked me to do him a favor, I was happy to do it. And you all, too, being good friends of his. Well, we, we do thank you, Mr. Uh... Mr. Johnson. Mr. Harwell T. Johnson. Hap is short for happy, which is the way I like to make folks feel. Now, uh, this, this here is my daughter, Ellie. How do, ma'am? Right proud to know you. Oh, that rowdy fellow was surely right about you. What'd you say? Why, just that you was the prettiest thing west of New York. Honest? You betcha. And I'd put it a little further, my own self. Maybe even Paris or France or somewhere like that. Uh, we was just getting ready to set and eat. You join us? Well, now, thank you. I don't mind if I do. And then after we eat, we'll get on about the business of that shortcut, huh? I guess. Mr. Favor says so. You betcha. I don't get it. They turned off. Yeah, they're heading due west. So this Jasper Johnson, according to the tracks. Rowdy, he's trailing them real close, or he's riding with them. That's it. He's joined them. Yeah, but why'd they quit the main trail? Let's go. <laughs> trail we'd be close on to san Luis if we stayed on the telegraph line well now you just don't worry about a thing mr kurtz uh, this is the right trail all right it sure is taking us off away from everybody we haven't got too much water you know oh well there's water just up a trail apiece yes sir, you just keep right on going Hit ya. unshod huh yeah, uh, Comanche's all right. No more than three of them. Uh, scouts, most likely. Yeah, look at that... that prince right over the wagon track. Yeah, they passed after. Uh, they know about the Kurtzes then, don't they? Heading that way. You know the way Indians track, Quince. They can follow along that ridge and watch these wagon tracks a mile away. Well, what do you want to do, Rowdy? That sort of changes things. 
Uh, plenty. Jim, you ride on back, not to the herd, to that trading post. That patrol ought to be there by tonight. Get that patrol over here. And, uh, and the boss, too, and Hastings, every last man. Make it fast, will you? <laughs> Mr. Kurtz, just like I told you. Water. Well, it ain't much. It ain't much good. Oh, well, it'll do just fine for cooking and watering the stock, and it's going to be more and better tomorrow. Now, could I help you unpack that wagon? Unpack? Well, I mean, just uh, get down whatever you might need for tonight, you know. No, thanks. I'll, I'll manage. Well, all righty. Well, I'll just get some more firewood, then. Oh, now, Miss Ellie, ma'am, you still wasting size over that cowpoke? <laughs> Rowdy? Did he really say those things? Why, you know he did. Oh, he cared a whole bunch for you. Of course, you ain't gonna have no trouble tracking the fellas like bees around honey. Quick as you get out there to Colorado, I might even be one of my own, self. Oh, now you're teasing me. Why, well, no, eh? You just wait and see. Of course, now your old daddy there, he might be holding some of them fellas off. Pa? How come? Well, I mean, him being so rich and all. See? Some fellas, they're kind of scared of that. Pa, rich. Won't have no trouble there. <laughs> Well, he looks mighty prosperous to me. Say, what did he do anyway back there where you come from? Arkansas. We had a farm. Huh. Sold it, I expect, before you come out here. I reckon. Oh, I just hope he ain't carrying too much money with him. You never know what kind of fella you'd liable to run into up here in these hills. Yeah, I know. We're just... Lucky, I guess. How's that? Well, we haven't come across any dishonest men. Like I thought you was when I first saw you. But you're nice. Almost as nice as Rowdy. Ellie. I'm coming, Pa. There's things to be done. I know. <laughs> up at a tree, and I see three birds sitting there on a limb. Now, I take out my old trusty pistol, and I shoot one down. How many's left? Why, two, of course. No, there ain't none left. If I shoot one, the other two gonna fly away if they got any chance at all. <laughs> now, I'm gonna tell you the story of old Daniel Weatherby. This here is a great engine fighter from back in the old days. And old Daniel was out there, and he was fighting about, oh, must have been 111 engines, I recollect. Tied him up against a tree with rawhide ropes. And there was one rope up against one side, tied to a eucalyptus tree, and there's one rope up against the other side, tied to a pine tree. And them engines come at old Daniel Webster, and there wasn't nothing he could do. And he swung back, and he let his feet go, and he kicked one of them over. And he swung so hard, he went right around the circle. Come down again, he kicked another engine. He kept on kicking them. He got to going so dang fast. <laughs> them ropes broke, and he went right through all them engines, and went right straight across the Oregon Trail, and landed in California. Can you believe that? <laughs> Lieutenant, don't be foolish. The Comanches have like they got twice as many men as you have, if not a lot more. Rowdy said to bring every man you could gather up. And if you leave us here, you're gonna have to leave men to guard us. Now, which is more important, the charge against us or saving those lives? All right. But we'll keep your guns. And you won't get them back unless we're about to go into action. And don't forget favor. You're still under arrest. All right, all right, let's go. <laughs> Hung to this tree with this screaming savage redskin, just a coming right straight at me with that scalping knife flashing between his teeth. Well, what did you do? I didn't do nothing. He scalped me and I died right on the spot. <laughs> hey, help me here. Come on, Jackson, help me. Rowdy. Well, what happened? 
Well, I heard something out there. I seen somebody uh, uh, sneaking around, sneaking in toward the fire, and I whomped him on the head. Oh, poor Rowdy. But uh, what was he doing out there, sneaking in on us? How do I know? He must have had a good reason. Anyway, you didn't have to whoop him so hard, you'd like to kill him. He's, he's coming around. I'm sorry, young fella. I didn't know it was you. I wouldn't hit you like that. Well, that's all right. Wow. But what was you doing out there? I thought she was a redskin. I think there's some Indians out there. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. That ain't why I came down here. Where's Johnson, anyway? There was a horse just took away. I'll bet that was him taking off. Why would he do that? Well, he's got a good reason, I can tell you. What do we do if the Comanches are out there? You think they might attack us? Well, that depends on how many of them there are. They might just try to run off the horses. That's the kind of raiding parties they've been on lately. Well, we, we, we could put the horses here, but it's just us two uh, men. Yeah, well, there's no use worrying about that now. Uh, probably won't attack before dawn anyway, and by then the lieutenant should be back with a patrol. If Quince got to the trading post, if they hadn't left. Don't worry, don't worry, he'll get back. Rowdy! No need for that, cowboy. I ain't no gunfighter. You just dropped that gun. Now, you and me are going to go back and talk to that lieutenant. You can tell him the whole story so that my boss and Wrangler get off. Well, now, maybe I am and maybe I ain't. Maybe you ain't got much to say about it, but you better let me keep my gun. Yeah, well, why is that? Because there's engines out there. I seen them back up in the hills. You mean you came back on your own accord? Well, there wasn't but two of them. They looked like scouts, but they could be waiting for other ones. And you just might need this old gun, rickety as it is. Yeah, that's real noble of you. Now, you just hand it on down. Rowdy, he could have run off and saved himself. I'm not too sure he didn't do that anyway. Probably got scared out there by himself and came back here for protection. Uh, you might be right. I ain't never been very brave. But I'd like to keep my gun. Just hand it on down here. You can settle yourself down here in camp. I'll give you the gun back when and if the time comes. We'd better follow these tracks. I tell you, Lieutenant, if we cut across these hills, we'll save nothing but time. Now, this man knows what he's talking about, so let's go. What's this here? Uh, I'm sorry. I guess I, I'm just kind of like you. I, I'm not very brave. Well, now, you just might surprise yourself. I, uh, I wouldn't mind it so much if, if I just hadn't missed one thing. What's that? When? I wanted one so bad. To that cowboy, huh? To anyone. Ever since I saw a picture of a bride, she was all dressed in white, all frilly and beautiful. Well, a 
dreaming's all right, just so you don't use it to run away with. You always got to remember what's real and what's important. Why, you got to appreciate what you got. What I got? Why, you got life. Ain't no use to be worrying about dying, not now nor never. There's time enough for that when and if it happens. Right now, you ain't dead. You're alive. And you're just so pretty, I can't hardly stand it. Tears? No, I... My, my, my eyes are just tired from watching. Well, you rest them while I'll watch a while. No, it's almost dawn. I, I can do my part. Fine. Rowdy? Yeah? I'm sorry I didn't say a proper goodbye to you yesterday. I'd like to now. Well, there's no need for that now. Maybe there is and maybe there ain't, but I know what's real now. I won't pester you again. Goodbye, Mr. Yates. It's been a real pleasure knowing you. Well, it's been a real honor knowing you, Ellie. It really has. Nice folks, ain't they? That's right. They'd be safe in San Luis now if it wasn't for you. What's the idea of taking them off the trail for anyway? <sighs> well, I figured they'd probably be soldiers down there, and up here we could ride along alone for ways. You sure it wasn't about Mr. Kurtz having some money? <laughs> what you talking about? I ain't no thief. Oh, that army stuff, that don't count. Well, I didn't do that for the goods alone. Besides, I wouldn't take anything from them people. I ain't that far gone, not yet. Thought never even crossed your mind, did it? Just because I don't want to spend all my days in the army barracks don't make me no criminal. Yeah, well, it won't be long for you, where you're going. You won't amount to anything. Well, just maybe I ain't gonna have too long to worry about that one way or the other. Say, just about 10 minutes. <laughs> Gonna give him my gun back, cowboy. Rowdy. Uh, Mr. Kurtz, uh, you better keep an eye out that direction. Never know where they're gonna come in from. They got two scouts down here close already. Yeah. One thing I want you to do for me, if you will. If. If you see that there's no chance for Ellie. I've already put one aside for that. Thanks, I... I just couldn't myself. You, you keep an eye on that side, Leo. What's happening up there? Looks like they're turning away. I'm watching, they may be coming around the other side. Wait! Wait, look, it's the soldiers!
Hey, they've got her on the run. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie. Ellie would say. Oh, No, don't shoot. You still just bound and determined to send me back to some federal prison, ain't you, cowboy? Mr. Yates, listen. He came back to help us. Rowdy, he could have saved himself. That's all the more reason to stay. He's made a good start on something else besides a winter soldier. You know what you're asking, don't you? Maybe five years back on some rock pile? Maybe not. Now, that's what we tell him about you coming back. You run now, and the winter soldier's all you're ever gonna be. You give me a choice? That's right. <sighs> well, I'd really like to. But I just ain't made that way. Wouldn't do no good. I'd just run off again. I know it would. Ain't no sense in trying to change me. Winter soldier's all I am. Mr. Johnson, please, won't you just try? I'm afraid not, Miss Ellie. You remember what I was telling you about what's real? Well, I know what's real for me, too. I'm just a rolling stone. I guess I'll be rolling on. <laughs> Mr. Kurtz, you tell that there lieutenant that them drovers didn't have nothing to do with that stolen army goods. I just left it there. About this here horse, I'll try to leave him up a trail for you someplace, because I ain't no thief. Not yet, anyway. All right. Goodbye, Johnson. Miss Ellie, you hang on to your dreams. Happy days, everybody. You think you'll get away, Rowdy? Yeah, I don't know, Ellie. But one thing's for sure. Looks like you might get that wedding you've been dreaming about. Are you asking? Uh, me? Oh, no. no. I'm just a rolling stone, too. I guess I'll be rolling on my way.
I think it's better, Mr. Favor. I do what I can, Senor Favor. And he's doing all right. It ain't hurting at all. Of course, sir. I don't know what Senor Wishbone would do if he was here. What did you do? I gave Senor Scarlet some medical whiskey. No wonder he ain't hurting. Only thing is, I feel terrible not being able to ride. Not one good thing, it gives Mushy a chance to be a drover for a while. That's good. Keeps him from cooking. Well, that's good. Hold this. What's the matter? What is it? Beef enchilada. A beef what? Enchilada. Ain't you never eaten Mexican food? Well, I don't like to eat nothing that I ain't familiar with. Well, Jesus made it for us, and in fact, it's mighty tasty. And why does it look like it's already been eaten? <laughs> Jesus is relieving Mushy on the cooking until Wishbone gets back, that's all. Now, if you don't like his grub, all you gotta do is tell the boss. But most likely, if you did, he'd put Mushy back on that chuck wagon, and you'd be eating Mushy's special stew instead of that enchilada. I like it. I like it. Your favor, I am worried. About what? Maybe the men do not like Spanish cooking. Well, take a look. They're acting like they've been starved for a week. I will feel better when Senor Wishbone comes back. Only a couple days now, we'll be at Horsehead Crossing. Join up with Wishbone and his friends heard. Meantime, I could use some more food, hey, Seuss. Trouble? There's a prairie fire up ahead. It's a big one. It's spreading. How close? Less than 20 miles. I have to pull the herd off the trail, pick it up past the fire. Well, that'd mean going west. There's no water for 20 miles or more. Hey, what's up, Pete? You can ride in here like your horse was on fire. The prairie up ahead is. Three days, forced drive ought to get us through. We'll start moving out as of right now. We'll push night and day. Scarlet, you fix sandwiches for the men. Jesus, every drover's to have a fresh horse every four hours. See, si, senor. We're moving out, starting right now. Hey, going west is going to mean we won't go through Horsehead Crossing. We'll worry about that later. If I could only get my boot on. Somebody's got to drive the chuck wagon. <laughs> God have mercy on his soul. Amen. And I think the good Lord will. Todd Murdoch was a good man all the days of his life. Good man, good father, good friend. Well, that's all we can do or say here. Jerry, get ready to move the beeves out first thing in the morning. Mr. Favor will be expecting us at Horsehead Crossing. We've been ready for more than a week. Well, I couldn't let Todd Murdoch die alone. Oh, we're gonna have to let his daughter know about this. You got the name of that school she goes to back east? Mm-hmm. I uh, just soon you'd write the letter. Main thing is for her to understand that we'll take care of the herd, get her the absolute top dollar for him. Yeah, I'll get that letter off tonight. Oh, I hope you don't think that I'm being taken charge too much or anything like that. Uh, see, Todd and I was friends for so long. Well, he was always talking about you. Yeah, we was mountain men together. Went through an awful lot in those days. Must be that's why he kind of left me in charge, you see. Give me the ownership paper. Oh, I ain't taking offense. I've been following Mr. Murdoch's orders for a long time. And they're still my orders, even though he's dead. Uh, he sure had you pegged right. Todd told me when Mr. Favor sold the herd, you were to have an extra 10% for past services. Well, that's very nice of him. You fellows will come into something, too. Nice. Real nice. Well, I... Guess we might as well board up the house, get those bees ready to move. Oh, uh, 
I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea for me to ride on ahead and tell Mr. Fravor what's been holding us up. If we're late, he'll be fit to bust a gut. Then, of course, those drovers having Mushy's food to eat all this time, they're not going to be happy either. Anyway, I want Mr. Favor to have the ownership paper so I don't have to worry about it anymore. So you fellas bring on the beeves just as fast as you can. Mr. Favor has to wait any, he'll be mighty unhappy. He's not exactly a patient type. You ain't going anywhere, Mr. Wishbone, without us. He's only fooling. Only fooling with a gun? Well, that's always good for a laugh among friends. A gun never made me laugh. Wishbone don't know you like we know you. Now tell him it was all in fun. But then you said that we shouldn't let Mr. Wishbone go. Of course. We got used to eating good. We didn't want to stop yet. That's what he means. Now, ain't that what you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. It was all in fun, Mr. Wishbone. We got so used to eating good, Mr. Wishbone. So, you wouldn't run off and leave us behind, now would you, Wishbone? Oh, of course not. What's a few more days? Mr. Favor and those drovers can just wait. Make them appreciate me more. Thanks, Wish. Yeah. Thanks. Well, fellas, we better get our gear packed. Tomorrow morning, we all move out together? Yeah, sure. Invented horses. Well, I don't think you can rightly use the word invented in relation to horses, Barney. Well, I can think of lots of words to use, but not when I'm in the saddle. What's the matter, fellas? Saddles don't fit too good today. Well, we was just resting the horses, Mr. Favor. Oh, good, good. All right, get moving then. Uh, on foot. We'll give the horses a real good rest, huh? Two more days of forced drive before we get the beef to water. No, I know. Men been in the saddle for 24 hours, though. They gotta have a rest. Boss, 
There's no doubt we're all tuckered out, but we know the herd's got to be pushed on. You just say the word and we'll be in the saddle before you can get off the ground. Yeah, hey, man, can't make it the saddle. I'll uh, give him a lift. We've been pushed this hard before, never killed any of us. Pete's right, Mr. Favor. Matter of fact, Mr. Favor, I ain't even saddle sore. A little foot sore, maybe, but it's easier to keep going, boss. Laying around just stiffens you up. Next thing you know, I bet the lead steer is telling me how to do the job. Now, I said we need a rest. What are you all doing standing around not resting? My job to get the herd in. Every one of them alive and as much of the crew as I can. Scarlett, you get a boot on that foot yet? See stupid bandages. All right, all right. You stick with the chuck wagon. I miss old wishbone. You? Ain't you the one that complains the loudest about Wishbone's cooking? All I'm saying, I miss him. Not my, I'm not saying my stomach misses him. Yeah, well, Wish probably having the time of his life, the horse head crossing. changing its direction. The water? It's beyond that. That's where we're going, then. You can't drive a herd through that. Can't go back, neither. Last water we was at was three days dry from here. Three days forced dry. You think the herd can make that? Why don't you just throw that bucket away? Oh, that? Oh, I got too attached to that one. Get it fixed and we get to Horsehead Crossing. Are you sure the trail boards are still gonna be there? We're kinda late. Mr. Favor will be there, don't you worry. He may be mad as a hornet with nobody to sting, but he'll be there. Probably waiting to sting me. Thinks a lot of you, don't he? Oh, yeah, what kind of a team, you might say. If you don't say it so as he can hear you. They took the wrong turn. They took the wrong turn, didn't you hear me? You doing what I think you're doing, Jerry? You're wrong, Wishbone. See, those leaves are going exactly where I intend for them to go. Top dollar, Wishbone, like you said. And no split for the trail boss. And no split for Todd Murdoch's daughter, either, huh? I always thought you were a sly one. Well, it don't take any mental giant to figure what you're all planning to do. I'm gonna cut you in, too. Thanks for nothing. I didn't think Wishbone would be asking for a share. After all, he's honest. More than that, I remember Todd Murdoch. Forget him. He's dead. Up at the railhead, these beeves will bring maybe $40 a head. That's $20,000. And none of it yours. Well, we're making it ours. Now, don't talk rough to Wishbone. Now he knows how much money there is, he might want to change his mind. Yeah, I might. I'll be honest with you, Wishbone. Oh, keep honesty out of it. Well, we're not going to make any money with that herd grazing here. Let's go. Sure. And you forgot. The ownership paper. You can't sell beeves to anybody without the paper showing you got title. It's safe enough with me. I think it'd be safer with me. You've been honest a long time. It might be hard to break the habit. Just possible while we're out driving the herd, you might decide to take off for someplace else, like Horsehead Crossing. We're taking them away from you. 
Get down off that wagon. You had me fooled, Jerry. I never did think much of these other two. Get down! The dead man thought you was decent and loyal. Shut up. Decent and loyal thief. I don't want to hear any more. Well, get used to the label, Jerry, because you're going to be wearing it a long time. Give us that paper, Wishbone. Put that gun down. They kill him and we'll never find out. Ask me, Jerry. Ask me. Don't tell me you're not the foreman anymore. Why don't you go easy on yourself, Wishbone? Just tell us where you put the paper. You'll never know. Never's a long time. Leave him go. A man his age, you bust his ribbons. You'll most likely kill him. He's right, Milton. We don't need to bother with him. That paper's on him or someplace in the wagon. We'll find it. quicker our way. Do what you have to do. You know, Wishbone, a man can stand pain for an hour, a day, a couple of days, maybe even a week. But then the pain gets stronger than he is, and he talks. No matter how much he don't want to, he just talks. You know something, Mr. Pitts? You aren't gonna have that much time. Because if I don't show up at Horsehead Crossing, Mr. Favor and all his drovers gonna come looking for me. Jerry? He could be right. Let's make sure he ain't right. If you'd kept your mouth shut, it just might have happened. Oh, it's gonna happen all right. No. No, you're gonna write a letter to Mr. Favor. Yeah? What kind of letter? Oh, a letter saying you decided not to join up your new herd with his, that uh, you figure you can get a better price on your own. I'm not going to write any such kind of letter. You hear that, Milt? He says he ain't going to write any such kind of letter. <laughs> if you don't, we got nothing to lose trying to find out if you can live with all your ribs busted. <laughs> <laughs> No sense making such a fuss over a little old letter. After all, it isn't like I was giving you the ownership paper. Of course not. You write the letter, we'll get it to Mr. Favor, and then we'll see. You might change your mind about other things. Yeah. First, I'll write the letter, then we'll see. <laughs> Moving real good, eh, Mr. Favor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just terrible. I sure don't know what got into that lead steer. A yeah, little happens sometimes on a forest march. Lead steer cracks, goes bad. We'll need a substitute lead. 
Well, there's a red one there on the far side. He's got the makings. What do you say, boss? Yeah, he'll do. The herd's bunching up, Mr. Faber. Yeah, lead steer went bad, butchering. Quince, you cut out the substitute lead. Get him moving at the head of the herd quick as you can. Yeah. Mr. Faber, why you got to kill that steer for? Why don't you just put him back with the rest of the herd? How much he? The rest of the herd's just got used to following that lead. No matter where you put him, the rest are just line up in back of him. I'm afraid it's just the way of cattle, or people for that matter. Maybe you killed him. He's still breathing. He's an old man. He doesn't tell us where that paper is. He ain't gonna get much older. Vinny, you know we can get rid of those beeves without an ownership paper? <sighs> to who? Skinners? All they'd give us is a lousy five dollars a head. Well, that's still twenty-five hundred, and it's money here and now, not four months away in Abilene. You mean you'd be willing to settle for twenty-five hundred dollars instead of twenty thousand, Jerry? Maybe he is, but I ain't. You already beat him unconscious. What more can you do? I ain't killed him yet. That sure smells good. When's that stuff gonna be ready? I'm hungry.
someplace. Get off that horse. As soon as he came to, he went to the back of the chuck wagon, started rummaging around a bit, found a piece of paper. I don't know how I missed it, but it's in his front pocket, his front right pocket. This ain't nothing but a grocery list. Why, you miss... Never mind him. Let's get the horse. We ain't got none to spare. You haven't got any brains to spare, neither, mister. <sighs> Trying to pull an old trick like that on me. No harm done, old man. We got all the time in the world. find that paper sooner or later. Why get yourself hurt so much? What's the matter, Jerry? You got no stomach for this sort of thing? I didn't want it this way. Of course not. You wanted it nice and easy and friendly and crooked as blazes. I got nothing against you, Wishbone. Oh, thanks. Wish I could say the same for your friends. They ain't my friends. I need their help. Once we sell the beeves, I'll never see him again. <laughs> You'll see him. Or others just like him. No, I ain't gonna stay a thief. This is just to give me a chance. I've been raising other men's steers all my life. I never had more than twenty, thirty dollars in my pocket, enough for long, neither. Not for cards or women or drinks. Year in and year out, my life. Passed through my hands like sand. Well, the money I get out of this is gonna give me a chance. Dirty money isn't gonna give you a clean life. Now, money ain't clean or dirty. Money is just money. Money is Todd Murdoch's money. He's dead. Well, his daughter isn't. She's somebody I don't know in a place I've never been. Look. If you want to be a rustler, why don't you steal from some rancher that wears a gun and can come after you, instead of some dead man and his daughter? Forget me. I'm trying to save your skin. Well, forget my skin. It hurts some, but it'll get well. You want to save something, look inside your own skin. You'll find more than you can handle right there. Beat. They got more brains than all the drovers that ever lived put together. When they're hurt, they bellow. When they're wore out, they stop. Yeah, Roddy said we'd better stop and rest on the spell. Where is he? He's up ahead. Move, you slab-sided mountain goat. Now, move! All right, all right, fella. 
Look, I know. I know you beat, so am I. Now move! Ah, steers too spent to move. The boss is trying to raise the dead. Now look, fella. I said I understand. You're beat, I'm beat, everybody's beat. Nobody, nobody thinks we can do it. But we're gonna fool him, ain't we, fella? Now you're gonna move. You're gonna move, I'm gonna break your back, buddy. Now move! Move! Now, huh? That lead steers as much a trail boss as you are, boss. That's saying a lot. Chuck Wagon sure needed fresh horses. Si, senor. Uh, the foot, it is better. Well, it'll hold me up, especially when I get back in the saddle. You must be the cook's louse. But, senor, I... I got a note from your cookie. <laughs> senor Wishbone? Senor! Who was that? I don't know. Uh, what was the drover doing? Slacking off? It was not a drover, senor. He brings this. It's a letter from senor Wishbone. Well, read it. Let's find out how he's getting along. Dear Gil. Huh? It is what it says. It is what senor Wishbone wrote. I've been on these drives a long time, Wishbone. Never once heard him call Mr. Favor Gil. It sure don't sound right coming from him. Go ahead. Read the rest of the letter. Don't expect me for the drive or the cattle, neither. Mr. Murdoch died, left the beefs to me, and I'm going to sell them on my own. Regards, G.W. Wishbone. Well, that don't sound like Wish, either. No, he's in trouble, Pete. That dear Gill and that regards G.W. Wishbone, sure sign of it. If his herd wasn't in trouble, I'd, uh, I'd run after that, Jasper, and find out what's going on. Why don't you ride after him, anyhow? Uh, I can't, not without telling Mr. Favor. Tell you what, I'll pass the word. Mr. Favor won't know you're gone as you get back. The rest of us will work harder to make up for it. I'm ready to ride again. So you're not the only one that likes wishbone. All right. <clears throat> I kind of hate to see him ride off alone like that. I think I'll, uh... You think you'll... with that foot like that? fight for a little skinny old man. You getting like Munson milk? All soft and kindly? Don't you worry about it. Jerry, you getting anywhere with that old fool? Go ahead, Terry. Tell him how far you're getting with the old fool. That paper's got to be someplace. We'll find it. When? Before or after we get to Abilene? <laughs> that paper ain't worth a man's life. You're trying to get yourself killed. That's what you're doing. You're trying to make a murder out of me. A man does that for himself. Just tell me where the paper is. I'll make sure they let you go. I swear, you'll come to no harm. It'd be interesting to know what you swear by, Munson. God, your honor, what? Dexter! Stop! Oh. 
Well, now, thank you, boy. How'd you know I was thirsty? Now, look, we can't keep on torturing an old man. Let's get rid of the beeves here and now to the Skinners so we can forget the whole business. At $5 a head instead of 40 I can't afford to take no such loss. You get my letter to Mr. Favor? Trail boss was busy. I gave it to the cook's louse. This is as far as we go. You tell us where the paper is here and now, or are you going to die here and now? All right, time to the wagon. <laughs> Sounds pretty hot. I'd say unless you talk before then, old timer, you'll last maybe three hours, give or take a little. through that fire, boss. It's half a mile deep. There's no other way to go. Summer lightning. Now, when we hit the fire, there might be some burnout ground we can push the beach through. There might be. We'll find out when we get there. Chuck wagon or something? No, Senor Roddy. I, I thought maybe you have some trouble and I came to help. Well, if there's any trouble, we're going to be riding right in the middle of it. I don't mind. It is to help Senor Wishbone. I wouldn't want to say this way he would hear, but he's like a father to me. Yeah. Uh, Senor Scarlet's foot is very painful yet, but he is with the wagon. Yeah, something else will be painful. Well, as long as you're here, fine. The only trouble is, these tracks seem to have given out. It's the ground's too hard. If we go on ahead, maybe we'll, maybe we'll find something. No sandwiches. I'm working on it. The men are going to have to wait. They don't seem to come out right. Well, we don't have much time to eat anyhow. Besides, nobody's got much of an appetite. Well, that being the case... Joe, we're going to be hitting that fire in less than an hour. Now, if we find a way through it or around it, fine. But if we don't... We got to. Ain't no other way saving the herd. That's right, there ain't. But what I want to know is if we don't get through, are you going to be able to saddle one of these wagon horses and ride out? Sure, but the hardest part was getting my boot on. Well, just remember, they make the fastest horses in the world. Well, the fire burning their tail ain't no such thing as a slow horse.
came from over there. The Senor Wishbone is in trouble. Jesus, come back here. You don't want to tease old Wishbone like that. He'll get all the water he wants once he hands over the ownership paper. Matter of fact, once he does that, we might even let him go swimming. A nice, cool, wet river. How's that sound to you? I'll see the devil fry you first. You're the ones frying, old timer. Jesus! Watch out! Hey, Tie him up, Jerry. Take Munson's gun, Mother. There's no reason for that. I ain't waiting for one. We're not gonna be able to circle that, Mr. Favor. Well, we're gonna keep trying. Well, there ain't a chance. Any man worried about it can cut out now. All right, then, get back to the beef. Spoken. Yeah, they're spoken because I stirred them up. What? He'll get it before I do. You drop your gun, mister, if you want the old timer here to go on living. That cuts him out. Don't look too good, though. Our chances of getting them cows to market. There's always the Skinners. The price ain't too bad if I don't have to split it with none of you. And none of you are gonna be around. Looks like he'll live to hang. Why don't you untie Jesus, huh? Look too good, Wish. You always have been jealous of my beard. Well, that was a pretty quiet bunch. I had a hard time stirring them up. They never did make these canteens big enough. Why'd you shoot Pitts? I ain't sure. I didn't like what was happening to you. But even more, I didn't like what was happening to me. They made you do it, didn't they? Just like they did me. Well, we got one to bury and one to turn over the law. 
Jerry, why don't you stick with us to drive this herd till we catch up with Mr. Favor? Sure. Yeah, that's if Mr. Favor has a herd left. Only one thing, Wishbone. What did you do with that ownership paper? Oh, I hid that real good. <laughs> was all the time. You know, a man looking for something hidden almost never looks right under his nose. Hey, it's a good thing this rain didn't start any sooner. This paper could have got washed away. Hey, you were saying something about Mr. Favor not having a herd? Yeah, well, that was before this rain started. worked out just the way I wanted them to. You see, I wanted them to force me to write that letter to Mr. Favor saying that I wasn't coming back to the herd. But suppose Mr. Favor would have believed it. That's exactly why I started out the letter the way I did, saying, Dear Gil. You'll excuse me, Mr. Favor. Of course, Mr. Wishbone. Because I knew the minute he laid his eyes on that dear Gil, he'd know something was mighty well wrong. Yeah, I would, if I'd ever got the letter. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you were kind of busy at the time. So you just took off from the herd without notifying anybody? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Favor. It's a good thing for me he did. Oh, I appreciate it. I do. That's why he's going to ride drag for only a week. Drag? <laughs> <laughs> One. Thirty-two thousand five hundred. There you are, Cantwell. And I must say, I'm relieved to be rid of it. It's more than I'm used to carry. Payroll and allotments for six months. Mounts up surprisingly. Even for a small post. Oh, uh, I didn't mean anything derogatory. you plan to retire. Any day. As soon as they send my replacement, I'll be done with the army. All of it, for good. All I want is to walk out of here and never see another uniform again as long as I live. Sorry you feel like that, Cantwell. I don't think it does you much credit. Well, I don't care what you think, Colonel. Well, anyway, good luck.
Just drunk and disorderly, but repeat his offences. Not the usual punishment here for that? No, but he's an unusual case. He's Major Cantwell's own orderly, and he took advantage of it. Anyway, I guess the Major had to make an example of him. Oh, Fibber. Cattle delivered? You'll uh, want your pay. It can wait. It is in case you was coming out to release this man. You can wait a lot longer out in this weather than he can. Were you ever in the army, Mr. Favor? Oh, yeah, but i never seen nothing like this. Your sympathies are wasted on that man. But his time is up, so I can oblige you. Sergeant, cut him loose. Caster, turn all army property into quartermaster and get out. Thanks. Colonel. Come in, Faber. Drink, Mr. Faber? No, no thanks. I thought all cowmen rushed for a drink. First thing off the trail. I'll just take the money, thanks. Of course, you'll... Uh, I want to get back to your cows. All right. I think a fort can be run without discipline, Mr. Faber. Can you uh, run your trail crew without it? There is a difference between discipline and brutality. Oh, is there? What's brutal to one may not be to another. No. No. All right. Yeah, that's right. Well, see you next year, I guess. I think not. I have to deal with someone else next year. I won't be here. Oh, transfer? Retirement. Don't say you didn't know I was that old. Oh, well, there was one thing that surprised me. I didn't realize you was a colonel. Well, that fellow out there did call you colonel, didn't he? Are you trying to insult me, Favor? Just curious. 
Why should that insult you? It's none involved? of your business. Didn't mean to offend. Now, don't apologize. Just get out. Go have your drink at the sutler's. Leave me to mine. Right now. Uh, Mr. Favor, your uh, men tell me your boss and the trail herds are. Yeah, that's right. My name's Castor. I wondered if you might need a hand to the railroad. Oh, uh, sorry, fella. I'm full up right now. Uh, no way for me to work a ride, just to the next town. About my, uh, being tied to that wheel in there. I can explain about that. I'm not asking for no explanations. Yeah, but maybe I owe one, seeing I'm asking to join you. Seems I was a little too familiar with the bottle. Yeah, I heard. I get bored out here. Nothing to do, no place to go. I can believe that. Yeah. Well, being his own orderly, maybe I asked for it. I took advantage, even though I knew the kind of man he was. Stickler for the rule. Anyway, he threw the book at me. Mr. Favor, that's a long walk to that railroad. Oh, well, sure, we can save you shoe leather anyways. I'll buy you a drink? Wanna try some of ours, that is, unless you swore off. Oh, Favor. Can I see you for a moment, please? There's uh, something I'd like you to do for me, if you will. If I can, well, what is it? Just uh, drop this package in the mail at the nearest post office you touch. Next place we'll be hitting is Junction City. You'd do a lot better with regular army mail. Well, no, no, not now. Uh, that went out with the paymaster today. Stupidly, I forgot to put this in. Anyway, time is not the important thing. It's personal, not army business. You'll see I've addressed it to myself, care of postmaster Tucson. Well, it's no trouble to me if you're not worried about time. Uh, just keep it uh, secure and confidential. I mean, it's personal papers of considerable value to me. I wouldn't want it lost. Well, the best I could do is keep it with me in my saddlebags, all right? Uh, yes, thanks. Well, uh, goodbye, Peter. Good luck. Uh, I hope he didn't talk you out of letting me ride with you. No, I didn't even mention you. Good thing, too. You and him come blows, I bet. Say, what's this um, colonel business all about, huh? You haven't heard the story? <laughs> it's not important. Buy you that one for the trail? Good enough.
it's almost time for retreat call. I brought your sword. Oh. Put it there. Yes, sir. What's that? It's a buckboard, sir. It's an officer. Good to see you, sir. Remember me? Whaley. I was with Cushing in the 23rd. Uh, captain already? Motion wasn't so fast or easy in my day. Well, what brings you way out here, Captain? Assignment, sir. I'm your replacement. You're... You're replacing me? Yes, sir. I know I wasn't expected. The fact is, I'm carrying my own orders with me. And the replacement won't take effect until retreat tomorrow. But I didn't know how long it would take me to get here. You're replacing me with a young green captain up from the ranks. I'm hardly green, sir. I suppose the activity at this fort has diminished somewhat. They know how to insult a man. I'm sure there was no such intention. There's certainly no such feeling on my part. No, of course not. Well, so be it. I relieved I can retire, be done with it. To retreat tomorrow, I say. Excellent. I'll, uh, I'll be ready. Oh, well, Colonel, I have news for you. What did you call me? Colonel, that's the news I have for you. It's all in these dispatches I brought. It's also common knowledge around Fort Leavenworth. And I must say, everybody's delighted. What are you talking about? You, sir? They held another court of inquiry. How dare you pry into that? Sir, you don't understand. It's all in these dispatches I brought. They reversed their previous decision. They've vindicated you completely. And they've restored you to your proper rank of full colonel. Not only that, but... Maybe you better read it for yourself. I'll proceed directly to the city of Washington, D.C., where... Yes, sir. You're to get a congressional citation for a distinguished career, promotion to brigadier general, and retirement at full pay and requisites. And I must say, sir, it's richly deserved. The whole service is pleased. Colonel? Sir? That uh, drover favor, is he gone? Yes, sir, over an hour ago. Do you know where they're camped for the night? He didn't say, sir, but probably over by Chalk Springs. That's the nearest water on the trail. I'll want a horse saddle right away. But, sir, it's almost time for a tree call. That's an order, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, pardon, sir. Would you please check this duty list for me? I have time now, Lieutenant. But, sir, it has to be read or a tree. Lieutenant! What is the first requirement of an officer? I... I... Command! The ability to take responsibility. Now, in your judgment, is that list correct? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Well, then, read it to retreat. If you made a mistake, suffer the consequences. That's why they made you an officer. Yes, sir. What are you doing here, Whaley? Why, nothing, sir. I was... Just looking around. Uh, I didn't think you'd mind. According to your orders, Captain, you will not take over here until retreat tomorrow. At that time, I will turn over to you all post records and monies, as well as this office. Until then, this is my private office. I will thank you to stay out of it. I beg your pardon. I meant no discourtesy. 
Though I can hardly see how I've offended you. Let's say you didn't. Let's see you don't, if you please. Anything you say, Colonel. You're the man I want to know. Let it smell, I haven't had such food in a month of Sundays. <laughs> Just a couple of clods, it was too tough for the stew. I just don't ask me to mind my manners. I'm a man starved for good eating. <laughs> Come on over and meet the rest of the crew, Captain. Who's he? I'm just a drummed out dog robber, saving shoe leather to the railroad. Man, meet Castor. He's riding with us. Hello. Oh, All right. Howdy. Dismiss the troops. Stand, shut. Dismiss. Congratulations. 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 Wonderful. Colonel, sir. I wonder if you'd mind stepping over to the men's mess hall for a moment, please. Not now, Sergeant. Whatever it is, you'll have to attend to it yourself. But I'm afraid I can't. This is something you'll just have to see for yourself. I told you, Sergeant, I'm busy. I can't be bothered. But, Colonel, please. Sergeant, do I have to order you? No, sir. Oh, uh, wait. Do you say it's important? Yes, sir. Well, what is it? I can't tell you, sir, if you'll just come with me. Busted. Some running with the brass. Just as he was about to make general. When it comes to soldiering, or drinking, there's none better. It sure is nice and big of you to stick up for him after what he done to you. Well, like I told Mr. Favor, maybe I had it coming. I was a little uh, too fond of his liquor. And mm -hmm. if it'd go good right now. Well, you're out of luck here. Yes, yeah, what I figured. Well, this asked what was in the package he gave your boss. Oh, I didn't know he gave you a package, boss. Oh, he's probably saving it for the trail. For snake bites, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. All right, that's enough coffee. Anybody on night guard with Roddy? Let's get to it. Someplace. Did you get a bedroll? Oh, no, no, thanks. I'll get one. Well, good night. Good night. <laughs> I think it was wonderful. I did very well. Oh, I congratulate you. Sir, quite a celebration. I only hope when I leave the post, they feel the same way about me. I think they like me, Whaley. I'm mistaken. They love me. I don't believe that. They showed their respect tonight. Any cause would serve for a celebration? Oh, no, sir. It's not every day to have a man promoted to brigadier. That's a great honor. Is it? I never realized before what a fragile thing that is. Even now, uh, one slip, one mistake, they'd all be delighted to help kick me back down the ladder. They'd like nothing better than to see me broken again. Even now. 
including you. Plenty of coffee when that girl changes. Yeah, just put on a new pot. You know, I swear it's gonna snow. But it could have done. This late in the year, too. Mm. Well, what are you doing out here this time of night, Major? I uh, want a word with your favor. If you don't mind. I'd like that package back. I've changed my mind about sending it. Why not? It's yours. Over in my saddlebags. It's gone. I don't understand it, but... That's how it is. No. No, no. Now, Steve! Take it easy, old man! No! Steve! Trace. Paper. If you say thief once more. Oh, I lost my temper. Uh, it ain't in here, Mr. No right Paper. to accuse you. It's just that it is valuable to me. But you didn't ask for the responsibility. You guaranteed nothing. I'm sure you did your best. But it's gone from my saddlebags. Well, I'll just have to find it. All right, keep looking, everybody. I just don't get it. I know all my men can be trusted. Of course. I'm sure it'll turn up. Uh, we'll turn it up. If it's only a bottle of whiskey like that Castor fella said, what's the problem? Castor? Was he here? Uh, he was riding with us to the railroad. And he was real interested in that package. I told you it was confidential. He saw you give it to me at the settlers. Where is Castor? Well, I just seen him leave a while ago. I have to be headed toward Junction City and the railroad. You know this train very well? No, he was attached to headquarters. He never rode patrol. Can't get very far in this dark anyways. We'll get after him just before sunup. I'm going now. I might be able to catch him before dawn. Major? Look, it's just too tough trying to track him at night. We'd probably lose his trail. Mr. Favor, time is important. I have to have that package. It's vital to me. All right, all right. I'll, I'll send a couple of the men with you. You've done enough already. It's not your problem. Quince, take over. Now, uh, 
Where we are? Not exactly. Yeah, I thought so. Package really worth all this. I think it was clear by now. Oh, what's in it so almighty important? I told you personal papers. I want to get back to your herd, I suppose. Uh, I'll have to pretty soon. I can understand that. Besides, I'm afraid we've lost him good. Best thing for you to do, maybe, is to go to Junction City and see the marshal. No marshals. And get some help from the fort. No army either. I told you this is a private matter. All right. Have it your way. I'm afraid I've helped all I can. Favor. How do I know for sure Castor has that package at all? Look, I... This could all be a blind. You could be walking away with my package. Good. Well, you I... You better stay right with me till the package is in my hands. You think that thing's going to change my mind? You're wrong. Besides, I think you've got better sense than to use it. That package isn't back at the fort by retreat. You're going to be in very serious trouble. I am? Yes. All right, let's have it. What's in the package? You saw it yesterday. Oh, yeah, the money. $30,000. Of course. You retire, leave for parts unknown before the money's missed. Pick it up in Tucson, skip across the border to Mexico before they can trace you. Very nice. Is that what happened before, when they demoted you to major? Those charges were false. But they did demote you. I couldn't disprove them, but I was innocent. And this time? Everyone thought me a thief. Why shouldn't I be one? But, uh, now you want the money back? To put it where it belongs. The custody of the Commandant. Now, come, what changed your mind? It's enough for you to know. If that money isn't back in the box by retreat, the loss will be discovered. I don't intend to take the blame. I can tell them you saw the money when I paid you. And when I left the room for a moment. And they almost made you a general. Well, you go on and accuse me. I don't think you can make it stick. Anyways, I'll take that chance. Favor, I'm warning you. Stop. Go ahead, old man. You'll have to shoot me in the back. Stand, he's getting away. No, he ain't. He went into that box canyon. The only way for him to get out is past us. We just have to wait for him. You're sure? I'm sure. Now lie back. Take it easy. We can't just sit here and wait. 
We've only got to retreat tonight. Let's go in. You're not going nowhere except back to the post and the doctor. You fix it. I can't do enough. But it'll have to be enough. We're going to the post. Not without that money, Fever. Do you understand that? Not without the money. If you're going to be that stupid, I don't have to be a part of it, Colonel. General. Of course not. Go on. How you feel? Sure, he's still in there. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get you to a doctor. Not without the money. We waited too long already. I've never pleaded with anybody in my life. I'm pleading with you now. Pleading for my life. That's what I'm thinking of. Not, not that life. shoulder. Brigadier General Stars. You know when I bought those favor? The day I graduated from the point. I swore I'd never rest until I could wear them. I came close. War hero. Eagle Colonel. Desk job in Washington. So close. And the charge. Regularity of records, they call them. Completely false. I couldn't defend myself. Quick court martial. Demotion. all over in my career as a major. No honor, no worldly goods, nothing but disgrace. And yesterday, exoneration, promotion. my whole life the army literally west point mexican war war between the states i was a southerner stayed with the union lost everything even my wife children never saw them again Except the army, life of service, with honor. That's why I had. Favor, I've got to get that money back. You're dying. It's my life. You think Castor's just gonna hand the money back? I've got the power to arrest him. Take him back to the fort? 
Do you think you can put that money back then and nobody the wiser? I'll put it back. Do everything I can to make it right. Well, I guess there's nothing for it, but I go in and get him. Think you can handle this if he flushes past me? Yes. Fella, all you got to do is give back the money and, and you can go free. You think I'd fall for that? I'm not stupid. I know where Cantwell got that money, so he can't let me walk away alive. Yes, he can. I'll see to it he can. You got my word on it. <laughs> Your word? Keep out of this favor. It's none of your concern. I'm afraid I'm already in it. Don't shoot. Uh, 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 don't move. I was going to bring your horse back to you. Well, that, um... Package. I thought it was booze when I took it. All right. Just give me the money and you can go. Well, now how do I know I can trust you two? After you get your hands on all that money. I'm telling you, it's going back to the fort. <laughs> Cantwell's gonna take it back? You expect me to believe that? Uh, I'd rather burn it. You got it in that bad for him, huh? Let's just say it's my way of tying him to the wheel. Look, apparently neither one of us meant to be out here. All I want to do is sell my cattle. All you wanted was a drink. But we are here, so let's get out of it the best way possible, huh? If you try and take me back, I'm going to see you and Cantwell both in Leavenworth with me. I told you, you'll be able to go free. I have to get out of the saddlebag.
Now, get me back to the fort. Relieve your man, driver. Never mind. Go ahead, get the doctor. Sergeant, Sergeant. Retreat. It's right, Dawson. Go on, get the doctor. I'll take him inside. Retreat, Robert. Sergeant, Sergeant. Sergeant, Sergeant. Get you to bed. Oh, wait. Souvenir. You stars. Why? I couldn't accept the honor, no. You gonna tell him? I've always paid for my mistakes. I will this time. We're keeping him. Is that doctor? He's right here, sir. What is it? Gunshot wound in the middle. He's in pretty bad shape. Records, monies, all in order. He's dead. Strange, lonely man, Cantwell. A good soldier, though. Strict, tough, hard sometimes. Not always right, perhaps. Well, maybe not. But if he made mistakes, I guess he's paid for them. Well, Captain, see you next year. Thank <laughs> you. 
river running high and wide. Is that worth coming out of the way for? Except turning off the trail cost us three days. I know, I know. It saved the herd, though. Two and a half miles. Yeah, how much water? A river. Oh, boy, that's a relief. Last week, there hasn't been more enough to moisten their tongues. The herd ain't smelled it yet. I want them slowed down and broken up into small bunches before they do. Right. I've never seen the cattle behave like this. Hey, Jesus, I got problems enough without mushy. I don't want to worry about the bees. Senor Wishbone, please, look. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. Must be the water. No, senor. I know this river. The water is fresh and sweet. you drive them, and they won't drink when you do. Maybe they're sick or something. Maybe they're just plumb wore out. Oh, we've drove them that hard before. They ain't had no decent grass to graze on in the past three days. I tell you, they gotta be thirsty. They don't drink. They die. Well, I'm afraid I've got to admit, I'm stumped. I just don't know why they won't go to the water. I gotta find out in a few days. Could mean losing the whole herd. That could mean you men ending up without a full season's wages. Though there's still time to maybe sign up with another herd or at least look for another job. All of you, any of you, I'm willing to pay off any man that wants to quit. Right now. Nobody? Well, what are you all sitting around the truck wagon for? We got a herd of beeves out there just dying of thirst. Within sight and smell of water. Good sneeze could set them off in a stampede. I want every man in the saddle and I want them out there right now. <laughs> You, you said something about him maybe being sick, huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, why aren't you on your way to the nearest town to find a vet? Oh, well... That's a good idea.
Senor Wishbone. You think the men are going to be hungry tonight? I don't know, but if any of them are, they're mighty well going to get fat. We shouldn't have any trouble getting back to the trail once we get the bees across the river. Across it? Can't even get them to it. Well, maybe we can when Rowdy gets back with the vet. I got no belief in a sickness what hits 3,000 head all at the same time. They are just itching to run in every direction except the water. But they gotta have to stay alive. I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe I ought to go ahead and let them run themselves to death. Name's Tom Cowan. Looking for a job. Uh, well, I'm not sure this drive's gonna last out another couple of days, but if it does, I could sure use another hand. Well, um, I'm afraid he'd have to be a drover, though. You the trail boss? That's right. Name's Favor. Got a smoke? Oh, yeah. Do I look like a cook to you? Well, I don't care what a man looks like. It's what he can do that matters. So far, you can roll a cigarette. your guts on the ground? Now, what are you trying to prove, Cowan? Sorry, Mr. Faber. All right. You right, you rope, you hired. What do you come in for anyway, Jim? Oh, well, bees are starting to scatter and getting a little tricky in those arroyos. Need another man. Take him. His name's Cowan. Well, I'm, uh, Willing to forget it if you are. Let's get after those trays. It is sure touchy. Well, anybody might be missing a wing. Now you'll be needing a fresh horse before the night's out. I'll tell Jesus to get one out to him. The world's sure full of all kinds of fools like me cooking a hot supper. I'll be bringing in half the men when it gets dark. That only makes me half a fool, then. Wouldn't you know it? Any time the cook's last goes off is just a time to run out of salt. I suppose I could get by without using any in the stew. Don't answer. I'll go get it. <laughs> It's a fresh horse for the new man, senor Faber. Now they're old enough. Oh, fine, senor. Except I am running short of grain for them. We had to use so much when we're crossing the burnt-over land. No trouble watering them. 
No trouble, senor. What are you doing, Ferry and the Corporal? Oh, a bunch of steers got after me. Cowan picked me up. Jeez, what are you doing out with a herd anyways? You are supposed to be rounding up strays. You find a friend to take care of them for you? I don't need no friend to do my job for me. Or for anything else. Jesus. Get that horse up to him. Oh, I guess I'll make the stew without any salt. Stream like you told me to. But I tried to drive them in the river, but trying's all I got done. They ain't acting like these bees. Well, maybe it'll be different by morning. Could be. Want you to go across and pick up the cattle? I want every last beef in that water this morning. If you gotta boot him in one by one. for you the first thing in the morning. Well, come on, the men are gonna be wanting coffee. Ah! 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 Boss, your troubles are over. Where is the vet? Oh, he's back in Danville. Oh, we see, the moment uh, I told him about the whole situation, he knew what the answer was. Well, did he impart any of the secret to you? Yeah, that's right. You think maybe you might be able to share this with me? Maybe? Oh, yeah. Well, when I told him about the burnout grass that the bees have been traveling over the last few days, well, he had it all wrapped up. Oh, rowdy. Oh, no, no. So you see, the regular graze has minerals in it this burnout graze didn't have. And the one mineral they were lacking was salt. Now, the vet says that man or bees can't develop a thirst without salt. Of course. Those bees weren't after me. They were after the salt leaking out of my sack. Well, that explains why we only saw a few head drinking at the river. But the horses drank. Now, they was on their regular feed. I guess you could trail boss all your life and still come up with something new to learn. That's right. Our troubles are all over, aren't they? So it's just a matter of um, feeding the beef salt, huh? Right. You bring any salt with you? Well, no. Danville's just a wide spot in the road. They wouldn't have too much salt in the grocery store there. No store would have enough salt. Do you know how much salt it's going to take for 3,000 head of cattle? Pete, you know of any salt licks, salt deposits here about? But we're not on the regular trail. I don't know this country very well. Of course, if we were on the regular trail, uh, I don't know where there's any salt lakes. Uh, Mr. Favor. Now, Cowan? Nothing. Nothing, Mr. Favor. I was going to say something about salt. Now, look, Cowan, spit it out! I got 3,000 head of dying cattle out there. I'll tell you what you want to hear. Kind of salt you need is rock salt, ain't it? There's a rock salt mine near Murtry. At least there was about 10 years ago. What's Murtry? Town, 30 miles west of here. Quince, unload the supply wagon. As soon as you get it done, hitch up fresh horses to it. You'll be driving it. Wishbone, clear your cooking gear out of the chuck wagon. Jesus, fresh horses for both the wagons. Fast! Pete, you'll be in charge of this. Take Scarlet along with you to help load the salt. And Cowan? Uh, I can do most things anybody else can do, but when it comes to loading... Uh... Look, you've made it 
pretty clear you've got a chip on your shoulder about your missing arm. Well, let me make it clear to you, I don't give two cents about your missing arm. I wouldn't have hired you otherwise. But I did, so you're taking orders for me. Now, you're going to lead these two wagons to Murtry. Well, I, I can tell them how to get there. I do the telling around here. Do you know how long those cattle have been without water? A couple of hours could make the difference between their living or dying. You're the boss, Mr. Faber. It hadn't been working a long time. It never amounted to much. But I figured there'd be enough salt here for the herd. Can't see a thing inside. Well, we could put a bullet through that log and get in there and get the salt for ourselves. The sheriff around here is a lot quicker with a gun than a question. Yeah. Well, if there's no other way. The town's only a mile from here. Well, what good is that? Well, this is public land, but the bank used to run the mine. Just like it did practically everything in Murtry. Well, this ain't getting us any salt. Let's get to that bank. Let's get your saddle horses and leave the wagons here. John? Down that road about a mile, you're in Murtry. Bank's on the main street. Well, you're coming with us. Look, I'm giving the orders. You're coming. I can't go into town. You got us this far, you're going to finish your job. Ten years ago, I married a girl in Murtry. And I got my arm shot off in the war, so I had a friend write her a letter that I was dead. I got to stay dead for her. All right, going back to the herd. It was you, Cowan. Sheriff, I'm in a hurry. I've been away from Murtry three days. I think you better come along with me. I ain't even been in that town. Now, how can I be sure of that? I'll take your gun. Mr. Butler, we can't sit around here waiting forever. We got a herd that's dying. I just told you my father will be back any time now. You told me that an hour ago. I don't understand why you can't do something. Look, if you don't like the terms we make about the salt, I won't hold you to it. Look, I don't own this bank. I don't run it. My father does. I just work here. Well, you were in the Army, huh? That's right. Well, you didn't have to check with your commanding officer every time before you fired a shot, did you? I'd just as soon not talk about the army. Why you got that picture up there? Because my father wants it there. Hello, Frank. Me 
need some banking advice? I just brought a man in for the doc to work on. Well, the doc sure don't need my advice. He's wounded. Not bad, a flesh wound. Sam, the man in there is Tom Cowan. I ran into him just outside of town. He wouldn't come peaceful. Is he conscious? Alston, Wade, go get yourself a drink. Meet me at the bank later. He wouldn't talk to me. He will to me. He's lost some blood. Go easy with him. As soon as the doc comes, fixes him up, I'll put him in jail. We'll see about that. Right now, I want to talk to him. You wait here for me. So you come back after all, huh? Well, I... Took it off at Vicksburg. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that. That must be uh, almost ten years ago. I got the impression you were never coming back to Murtry. I wasn't. The sheriff changed my mind about that. I took a job with a herd going the opposite direction, but they they ran into trouble and need salt. What are you after? More money? I mean, there could be more money. For your arms, eh? You just don't understand, Mr. Butler. I don't want money. I, I don't want land. We made a deal, and I'm sticking to it. I'm trying to. I mean... I wouldn't blame you, passing through, wanting to see Jenny again. Mr. Butler, when you have somebody in the same hospital with you, right, right, your girl, that, that you're dead, you don't plan on ever seeing her again. Well, in that case, I better make sure word of your being here don't get around. You better do something else. Get me out of here. I will, Tom. I will. Frank, I want you to walk away from here and forget you ever seen Cowan. Nobody will know he ever come back. What happens when the doc gets here? Cowan will be gone by then. I'll handle that. There's still that bank robbing charge against him. I let him go once before because... Because I told you to. I'm telling you what to do now, too. You don't own me, Sam. I own Murtry and everything that's in it. Forget that, Frank. Look, it was my bank he robbed. Less than a hundred dollars in all. Letting him go ten years ago wasn't right. Letting him go now ain't right. Frank. Nobody but saints are right all the time. You and me, we're not saints, are we? I won't forget this, Frank. Then come into my office. Oh, pa, these men have been waiting on you quite a while now. Well, the bank is closed. Tell them to come back in the morning. Oh, wait a minute. We've been waiting here for three hours to see you. I can't help that. The bank is closed. Mister, there's 3,000 head of cattle down on the Waco that are going to die if we don't get some salt to them. You drove us? That's right. Well, uh, if you take your hands off me, maybe we can talk business. Now, uh, 
How much salt do you need? Oh, a couple of wagon loads. We got the wagons with us. Mm -hmm. Well, the mine ain't been worked in quite a long time, but I guess there's enough salt laying around to fill your needs. I'll uh, put some men on it first thing in the morning. No, wait. It's got to be tonight. Well, it'll uh, cost you extra if I have to put men to work tonight. How much? Oh, about uh, $150. All right, it's a deal. Will, uh, you go into my office and make out the contract. Well, Pa, we don't need any... You do like I tell you. And, uh, Will, you stay in there till I'm ready for you. Well, we'll be working right alongside your men, Mr. Brock. Well, that's a good idea. Make things go that much faster. Ah, uh, you have a fellow by the name of Tom Cowan working with your outfit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know where he is now? He's back with the herd. You're wrong. He's in town with a bullet in him. Just how bad hurt is he? Well, I never heard that a bullet helped a man's health much, but I don't think it's too serious. How did it happen, anyway? It was a mistake. I don't like the kind of mistakes that winds up with one of our drovers getting a bullet in him. Now, don't you go flying off the handle at me. This was a legal mistake. The sheriff shot him. Well, is the doctor looking after him? He ain't gonna be in town long enough for that because you're getting him out of here tonight. Well, if he's hurt, he shouldn't be moved. Ain't you got somebody with the herd who takes care of things like that? Sure, we got someone out there that does the best he can, but he ain't no doctor. Well, that's too bad, because that's the way it's going to be. Now, Mr. Butler, I don't understand what's going on here. But I know that if Cowan's been hurt, he ought not to be moved. The doctor checks him over. I thought you wanted that salt real bad. Well, what's that got to do with this? Unless you get Cowan out of here tonight, that mine stays closed. Now, it seems to me that you gentlemen are wasting your time and mine. And I think I can afford it a little better than you can. All right, we'll get him out of town. Now, hold on, Pete. If it's, if it's going to hurt Colin to move him, we better talk it over. We come to get that salt, remember? You aiming to become a trail boss, too? Joe, you've been a drover long enough to know that the herd comes first. You and Jesus go out to the mine, get our bed rolls, and make a place in one of the wagons for Colin and bring it back here. Where is Colin? I'll, uh, I'll tell you that when your wagon gets here. We'll get going. <laughs> Well, it's a real pleasure doing business with reasonable men. Now, while you're waiting, why don't you two go get something to eat? There's a saloon right down the street, and the food's a little better than the drinks. Well? I changed my mind. We won't need that contract. I'm going home. Good idea. Give my love to Jenny. I couldn't believe it. Tom, please look at me. Hello, Jenny. It's been a while, hasn't it? Why did they write me you were dead? Your arm. Everybody. First thing they notice about me is I got an arm missing. Is that why you didn't come back? That and other things. I was in love with you. You were in love with a man. 
Did you need an excuse not to come back? I would have. I wanted to more than anything else in the world. But you deserve... tell you where he is? He claims he ain't even seen him. The doc's been out of town most of the day, taking care of somebody on a ranch 30 miles out. He just got back about an hour ago. Well, maybe Cowan got tired of waiting, took off. Yeah, or somebody took him. Like Butler. Well, there's one way to find out. I'm going over to the bank. <laughs> time you got here. Now, look. Ralston is going to ride out with you to your camp to make sure that Carmen gets there. Wade here is going to have another wagon ready to replace the one that you brought in. But we ain't got Carmen. Why not? Because he ain't over at the docks. We don't know where he is. Well, you better find him. Now, look, I came here to get salt. It means more to me than you or Cowan or the whole town of Murtry, for that matter. I've tried to go along with you on this, and I've done nothing but waste time. I'm going after the salt. There have been a lot of people killed for less than 3,000 head of cattle, Mr. Butler. What good would it do you? I could have a dozen armed men around that mine before you were halfway there. Well, if you've got so many men, why don't you send them out to look for Cowan? The way I'm doing this is the way I want it done. Look, it's the middle of the night. How are we going to go out looking for a man? He might be anywhere. It'll be light in a few hours. Before the town is up, you try then. You're in my home. Mine and Will's. We were married three years ago. The widow's got every right to marry again. What'd you bring me here for? So I can congratulate your husband? Will thought you'd be safer here. Anyway, there's... Practically no bleeding from your wound. You should be all right if you don't move around too much. I gotta get back to the herd. Maybe tomorrow. In all these years, were you ever sorry that you had that letter sent? Did you wish even once that I knew you were alive? That I was waiting? I was too busy learning how to live with one hand. The day you married me and ran off, couldn't you at least have told me you were going? You didn't have much time to spare. He was too busy robbing Pa's bank and getting caught at it. Your horse was mighty hungry, Cowan. I got him better down, though. Tom, is what Will said true? It's true. Why did you do it? I promised you a wedding trip, remember? The last dollar I had, I paid the preacher at Antioch. Does he know? That a preacher said a few words over us ten years ago. That you wrote off saying you'd be back in an hour. That I waited for you that day and the next. And for weeks and months. Until the letter came telling me you were dead. That you never held me in your arms, not even once. I never told anyone. But Will knows. Will. Why didn't you tell me about the bank robbing? You knew how I felt about Tom. Pa told me he thought... Pa it... told you. 
Pa's been telling you what to do all of your life, and you've been doing it. Well, now, he's been mighty good to you, Jenny. Good to me? I don't think he even knows who I really am. Except that I was something you wanted. He's been good to Will's wife. And now it turns out that I'm not even that. You did this to me, Tom. Why? I didn't think you'd want me like this. Wouldn't it have been kinder to ask me? Nothing's been changed, Jenny. You got a letter saying your husband, your first husband, was dead. Well, he's still dead as far as you're concerned. No one knew about our marriage. No one has to. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna ride out of here. I never really was here. I've been dead for 10 years, remember? What, he, what he's saying is true. There ain't nobody has to know. Except us. I can't go on with you, Will. You're still in love with him? What good would that do me? Well, there's something ought to be done. Might be there's some legal way. I I'll ask Pa. I I'll write. Can't you, for once in your life, do something without asking Pa? I married you because I was hurt and lonely. That isn't a good reason for marrying. But I thought we had a chance. That is until I found out I'd married a boy and not a man. Our marriage hasn't been any more real than the one between Tom and me. I'm uh, tired. I made the bed up in the spare room. Jenny, you're even righter than you know. There's more to it than I ever did tell you. My uh, army record, the, the medal I got, the land I got for bravery. I, I was never in the army. I thought that would stay buried just like I thought Tom Cowan was dead and would stay buried. Well, I was wrong. There ain't nothing that stays buried forever. Is there more? Well, the sheriff caught Tom robbing the bank and... and he told Pa about it and... and Pa made a deal with Tom. A deal? Well, they were drafting soldiers for the army right then. And Pa got the sheriff to let Tom off from the bank robbing charge, and, and he gave Tom $500, and he got Tom to enlist in my name. Will, what are you going to do? I'm going to go into town, and I'm going to tell Pa for a change. I'm going to take Cowan with me. We got a lot to settle between the three of us. Him and Pa and me. John? He's gone. Time you stopped playing God, Mr. Butler. What, did you see a great light or something? It might be fever. I ain't feeling sorry for myself anymore. It's like taking the blinders off a horse. A whole new world opens up around him. And what's going to happen in that new world of yours? I'm taking what's coming to me. My land, my war record. And maybe five years in jail for robbing a bank? If I have to. But we can settle all that in the morning. Tonight, I'm making sure the drovers get their salt. 
Wait a minute. Did you think what this'll do to my son? To Jenny? To their marriage? I've seen their marriage. They say marriages are made in heaven. Well, maybe some are, but... this one was made in a bank. The truth's gonna hurt, Mr. Butler. But it'll be clean and sharp and short. Not like the lion rotten mess your son's life has been and Jenny's. And mine. Ain't nothing gonna change your mind? Nothing. And no one. And never. Inside. We have been looking for you, senor. It was said you were wounded. Well, never mind that. Dig up some lanterns, a couple of shovels, picks, meet me at the mine. I'll have it open by the time you get there. Si, senor. Pa, there's something I got to tell you. Ain't you done enough telling for one night? Cowan was here. Next time you want to confide in someone, why don't you try me first? All right, that's fine. There's some things I want to clear up right now. Not tonight. Pa, I'm warning you. By tomorrow, the whole town's going to know about us. I took care of you all your life. And I'm not planning to stop now. You and Jenny thought Cowan was dead. Well, you can go right on thinking that. Where's Ralston? Where's Wade? I sent him up to the mine to do a little chore for me. He's gonna run out of bullets a long time before we do. Just keep him firing. Wait. What are you doing here? I thought you might need some help. Well, you ain't even got a gun on you. No, but you have, and you still ain't taking him. Well, we're, we're waiting him out. Well, that could take all night, Ralston. I tell you what, I'll flush them out for you. Cowan? It's me, Will. I'm coming in. got to say, say it quick. They ain't gonna try to take you. Not till all your bullets run out. How many you got left? Those are my gun. Not enough. You figure on going out and telling them? No. Only reason I come up here was to... was to find out what kind of chance you had. Now you know. Yeah. <laughs>
got no idea how what I owe you has been dragging me down. Flushed Cowan out for us. the best for him. You gonna take me in, Frank? Gowan, you gonna tell the truth? Tell it myself. the salt you came after. What about me? When they cut off my arm, they... It took a while for the hurt to heal. I didn't realize how long. Ten years. It'll, uh, take a while for this to heal. Oh, no. 